One of the projects had three competing technological implement implementations, 200 different people, and only test content. They had a huge community of people building the stuff to build the encyclopedia, but they never built the encyclopedia. Right? GNU's not Unix, right? GNU, it's a bit like Unix. In fact, it's exactly like Unix. Look at the big successful free and open source software projects. They tend to be based around ideas that people are pretty familiar with. And as a result, pe people can come and can participate in these projects and contribute because they know what it is that they're trying to produce. And it's based, it's based on this idea, this model, that if we publish things openly, um, uh, the community will come in and improve them. And as a result, we'll get higher quality. The reason we think that we, we encourage people to, to you know, put it on a wiki, right, is because if we, the idea is that if we put it on a wiki um, uh, or if we sort of publish our code out there in like a free or an open source software project, that people will come in, they will start fixing our bugs, and through that process we'll end up with really cool, good, high quality stuff. And what I've noticed is that very often the, 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 this, this process where you sort of attract the community tends to be a, tends to be a pretty tricky one. What do people think the average number of contributors are to a uh, free or open source software project? Any ideas? So the answer is one. This is a list of all the SourceForge. Uh, uh, this is the this is a, this is a list of all the SourceForge projects, right? And this is unfair in some sense because this is just even ideas for projects. If we look at only um, so, what do people think the average number is if we look at mature projects or even the top ten percent of projects which have been downloaded, you know, hundreds of times? The average then. <laughs> one. The average is one. Uh, I am Benjamin Mako Hill, and I am a Wikipedian and a uh, member of the Foundation's Advisory Board and a uh, fellow at the Berkman Center for Internet and Society. I'm a, I sometimes describe myself as a sort of rebel with rather too many causes. Um, uh, and anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit today about um, a piece of research that I've done, which is uh, which I call almost Wikipedia. Um, and uh, this is, uh, I don't know, I gave a couple other talks in the conference which were um, sort of less about specific pieces of academic research. Um, this is really sort of a, a, a paper that I've written. Um, and so I'm going to try to sort of summarize this for the audience and, I mean, keep in mind that it's, uh, and, and skip through some of the more sort of, I don't know, the parts which will be of less interest to this particular audience. So. I'll tell you a little bit about my own research. I study free and open source. I come from sort of free and open source software communities, and, and I study them. Um, and I uh, mostly study a lot of. I do a lot, done a lot of work looking at remixing communities, and a lot of work looking at sort of online collaboration more broadly. And of course, I've done a bunch of research in Wikipedia. Um, a lot of this interest uh, in academia, I'm not the only person doing this work. I mean, the reason a lot of academics, the reason there's a lot of academics here trying to present their work is because they're sort of impressed with what's happened with uh, uh, Wikipedia and with the sort of high quality that's come about. And the idea here, the sort of story that people tell, is that the reason we're interested in what, we, what some people call sort of peer production, meaning sort of like online collaboration, is, is because when uh, there's this idea that, that, that when a lot of people get together, they can sort of work and produce really high quality stuff. That because there's so many people who are contributing to Wikipedia. It's both very big, but also very good. Um, the m large majority of research in this field has focused on the most collaborative and successful examples of the project. Um, uh, there are. This is a graph of papers published on Wikipedia each year. As you can see, it's like. We're, at, we're at somewhere at 300 pages a year. It looks like we might have more than 300 papers on Wikipedia published this year alone, right? There are tons and tons of research in Wikipedia, thousands of, um, thousands of papers. There are conferences, including the one that you're sitting at, which is about Wikipedia. Um, and again, I mentioned it's based, it's based on this idea, this model, that if we publish things openly, um, uh, the community will come in and improve them, and as a result, we'll get higher quality. The reason we think that we, we encourage people to, to you know, put it on a wiki, right, is because if we, the idea is that if we put it on a wiki um, uh, or if we sort of publish our code out there in like a free or an open source software project, that people will come in, they will start fixing our bugs, and through that process we'll end up with really cool, good, high quality stuff. And what I want to argue is that that bit right there, so I mean I come from these communities, I've done this a lot, I've actually uh, created um, dozens of examples of uh, free and open source software projects. I run a little wiki farm of my own, where I have a bunch of my own little wikis that I run. Um, and what I've noticed is that very often the, 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 this this process where you sort of attract the community tends to be a tends to be a pretty tricky one. So so just as a sort of like a uh, an idea here, what do people think the average number of contributors are to a free or open source software project? Any ideas? Up here. I would guess most of them are less than gigantic, uh, less than 20. Less than 20. Uh, one. 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 
So the answer is one. This is a list of all the SourceForge. Uh, uh, this is the this is a, this is a list of all the SourceForge projects, right? And this is unfair in some sense because this is just even ideas for projects. If we look at only um, so, what do people think the average number is if we look at at uh, at at let's say mature projects or even the top ten percent of projects which have been downloaded, you know, hundreds of times? The average then. <laughs> one. The average is one. The, the answer, I mean, I can keep doing this um, over and over, right? Um, um, the, the, the average number of contributors to a wiki at wiki. A wiki on wiki. It's not one. It's actually like five. Um, um, but, but four of them are bots or something like that. Um, uh, no. No, no. Uh, the, the point is, is that the, uh, the average number of, uh, uh, I've done a bunch of work on remixing communities um, where people can upload projects and the idea is people come in and remix them. The average number of remixes. Like one, right? This graph is like it's like I mean I, I could I could spend days just uh, uh, making and showing these things. The reality is is that the vast majority of attempts at peer production um, sort of never really take off. And although we've done a huge amount of um, uh, uh, and, um, so this idea is that only, uh, you know, the, the, the vast majority of things never take off. They never take off not in the sense that they don't produce something good. Very often they do produce something good. They don't take off in the sense that they don't become very collaborative. Um, um, even when they are producing something good. One person alone can produce great stuff. But actually creating these collaborative projects tends to be something that's, that, that's really tricky. And to the extent that the, the, that the, collabor the collaborativeness is what we find interesting about this, the fact that we're only looking at the successful projects means that although we've done written thousands of papers about how Wikipedia works, we don't really know why Wikipedia works um, because we don't know which of the things it does are sort of essential for the causal process of attracting those volunteers and becoming very collaborative, right? There's a big sort of gap in our research. And this is sort of what my broad body of uh, research is trying to look at. Um, so here's the sort of research question, right? Why do some peer production projects successfully attract contributors while most do not? So I'm, gonna I'm looking at projects, um, I'm looking at attracting contributors, and I'm actually interested in contributing because very often what you'll see is that getting people to sign up is much easier than getting them to do work, right? Getting people, to, and in fact, most people who create accounts in Wikipedia never make an edit. Um, um, uh, and, and the literature so far has basically not addressed this question in um, very, very directly because we've done, for example, lots of surveys of Wikipedians. We say, why are people contributing? And it's useful to know because we might want them to contribute more. But from a structural perspective, I mean, I create wikis. I create wikis all the time. Um, and they almost never work. And I'm incredibly frustrated by the fact that I don't know how to make those wikis work. And so that's sort of the question that keeps me up at night. Um, so, so the idea here is to say, if we want, so, 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 so I talked about this idea that, that we don't know why Wikipedia works. And the idea is that, w that to really understand why Wikipedia works, we need to not just look at what Wikipedia does. We need to look at all the sort of failed Wikipedias, right? Like, and we need to say, what did they do different than, than the one that worked? So wouldn't it be great if we had a bunch of failed Wikipedias, right? Um, so it turns out there were a bunch of failed Wikipedias. Um, at least failed in the sense that they never became as big and successful and mobilized as many contributors as Wikipedia did. Um, there were eight attempts to create online collaborative encyclopedias released for, whose content was released freely before Wikipedia was founded in 2001. Um, uh, and so all of these projects sort of called themselves encyclopedia, or the press um, called them encyclopedias, even if they didn't. Um, and, I've, uh, uh, and all of them sort of were collaborative in the sense that they were sort of trying to crowdsource work from volunteers. There was actually another project which was trying to sort of pay people to write, I mean, other than like the commercial encyclopedias, paying like random people on the internet to write encyclopedia articles. But I'm, I'm not including that not here. And as far as I know, this includes all of the attempts at creating online collaborative encyclopedias before Wikipedia. Um, I'm actually currently looking at projects which were created in sort of the first year of Wikipedia. And if you know of projects that I haven't listed here, I'd really like to hear about it because I'm not, this paper isn't finished yet. So I'm, I'd love to like continue to build on this. Um, this is the list of the projects that I have up here. You may be familiar with a couple of them. Um, the first one is Interpedia. It was created before the web. Um, uh, um, the second was called the Distributed Encyclopedia, which was created by someone who became a sort of major contributor to Wikipedia. Um, and the idea was is that people would host the uh, pages on the separate websites um, on their own websites, and then it would, it would sort of like be linked together from one place. Um, people may have used everything to or um, everything before it. It was sort of a, an, uh, an early encyclopedia project, which actually sort of changed to being, once Wikipedia became very successful, sort of decided to promote more uh, creative writing and things like that. But a very cool project. Um, which had actually quite a lot of contributors and articles um, and still exists. H2G2 was the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy Earth Edition. 
Uh, it's a super cool project. Um, it was actually created like sort of with Douglas Adams. Um, uh, uh, and it was sort of like an encyclopedia, but written from a sort of irreverent, sort of funny tone, kind of like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy would be if it were written. Um, uh, the Info Network was uh, an amazing project. The, the Info Network, the early versions of the Info Network looked more like Wikipedia than Wikipedia did when it launched. Wikipedia does today. Newpedia people probably heard of. It was the project created by the people who created Wikipedia before they created Wikipedia. Um, there was one called GNUpedia, which was uh, started by people from the free software movement. Uh, so GNU, sort of like hackers, um, and also sort of was around for a while. Um, as you can see, uh, the Intrapedia was founded like very early on, um, and it was sort of before the web, so there's some reason to believe that maybe that was like, uh, uh, maybe just a little too early, an idea before its time. But actually most of the rest of them existed at the same time, and most of them existed sort of contemporaneously with Wikipedia for a long period of time, um, around 2001. Um, um, what I've done for this, what I've done for this is, uh, in order to sort of answer this, answer this big question, right? Why did these, why did Wikipedia succeed where these other projects didn't? What I've done, I've gone and tried to find the founders of these projects, and I've done interviews with, um, I've, inter I've done interviews with all the sort of pe if pe people from all of the projects. I'm continuing to do more um, as I can sort of track people down. Um, I also got together tons of email, web, sort of like discussion forum. Uh, descriptions of how these projects worked, um, uh, newspaper coverage, planning discussions so I can see how people are working on it, um, with the idea of uh, um, sort of uh, walking through this and sort of trying to figure out what these projects are doing differently and, what, and, and why Wikipedia succeeded. And I got to tell you, when you talk to these people, like these are people who basically, like, like it's very hard to get them to talk about anything other than why their project didn't succeed where Wikipedia <laughs> didn't, right? Like these are people who've been thinking for the last 10 years, like, why didn't my project, like, like watching Wikipedia, like, you know, like become Wikipedia, right? Or like, man. Um, uh, but what's nice is now, it's, because it's been 10 years, they're like, am I bitter? Yeah, maybe I was before. I kind of got, they're like, they've sort of reached this sort of like Zen state. Like people have sort of dealt with it, right? So I'm doing a sort of, a, uh, um, I did a bunch of sort of qualitative methods where I transcribed a bunch of interviews and sort of coded it using um, a set of terms. So I sort of, I sort of basically tagged the text and then looked for um, sort of, and then tagged the tags and then sort of looked for themes to to emerge throughout this. And the result um, was a set of four propositions, um, sort of four theories. And these, are, and these are theories that I can't test, right? I can't say that these things are true for sure based on the nature of this message because I'm not testing theory here. I can just say that these are things that, that these data and that the people that I talk to have sort of told me. And what's interesting is that I'm doing in some quantitative work. I'm actually taking some big data sets of hundreds of thousands of wikis and actually testing to see if these things, you know, really are associated with increased mobilization in, in uh, projects going forward. But that's something I'll present next year if everything goes well. Um, anyway, I had four sort of takeaways. The first was that Wikipedia attracts contributors because it was built around a familiar product. And I'm going to talk about all of these in a little more depth. The second was that Wikipedia attracted contributors because it focused on substantive content development instead of technology. Um, the third idea was that Wikipedia attracted contributors because it offered low transaction costs associated with participation. And the fourth was that they uh, de-emphasized attribution through social ownership of content. And I'll tell you, if you don't understand what any or all of these mean, that's fine. Um, so the first idea, this idea of sort of, I, I already mentioned, was this idea of a familiar product. Um, and Wikipedia's um, familiar product was very key to its success. Here's a, here's a quote from one of the founders of Everything 2 who said, I don't think we ever used the term encyclopedia, and that probably would have been smart. Wikipedia had a bunch of, uh, had, a, had, a, had a much more focused purpose than Everything 2. Everything 2 was just by its nature sort of Zen Cohen-like, like everyone who was involved with it sort of thought it completely defined description. And that, I think, was to its, ultimately to its detriment. Versus Wikipedia, which is like, we're going to build th this encyclopedia like the world book, but huge and comprehensive. We're going to keep this impartial tone, and everything has to be referenced and that sort of thing. Wikipedia, um, uh, uh, Wiki, uh, Wikipedia attracts contributors because its product goal is very familiar with potential contributors. And the failed product sort of deviated from this model. The idea here is, is that people showed up at Wikipedia. I mean, there's thousands of pages of documentation right in Wikipedia about how to, about like what neutral point of view means, about what notability means. But, you, but here's the secret, right? And I'm an, I, I've got, you know, I've made many thousands of edits in Wikipedia. You don't actually have to read any of them. You can even win arguments without reading any of them. If you just say encyclopedic, encyclopedic over and over, it's like you basically know the rule. Um, because because notability basically um, you 
can, you can get pretty far with notability if you just think that notability means the kinds of things which are in traditional encyclopedias. And you can get pretty far with neutrality if you say the kind of way in which traditional encyclopedias are written. And as a result, people who showed up to Wikipedia sort of knew exactly how, um, what was expected of them in terms of, in terms of how to contribute to the project. And it made it much easier for those people to, to contribute. And a lot of these other projects that, that sort of deviated from this, that, 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 that like the previous example said, sort of tried to sort of explore what an online encyclopedia would, would look like, really sort of um, struggled as a result. Um, so here's an example of this. Um, Everything 2 described itself as a flexible web database, which seeks to find the best way to store and link's idea. The result, it's absolutely crazy. It's like, okay, it's absolutely crazy, but like, what, what do I do? Um, uh, ooh, I just blanked the screen. Um, another person said, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't conceive of it as, let's put an encyclopedia online. I thought, this is gonna be an exploration, and we're gonna figure out what a reference work online looks like, right? It's really trying to sort of explore what's going online. Um, Here's an example from H2G2. Um, the guy said, uh, they described some of the problems that contributors had by the fact that they were just a little bit different. Now H2G2, remember, is just an online encyclopedia written in like a slightly funny way. And it said, one of the problems was people would be writing completely fictional stuff about the universe, you know, about the Hitchhiker's universe. And we'd go, no, 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 you're not getting it. This is for real people. This is about the real world. And then, at the same time, what they did, they'd also do stuff about the real world, but try and write it from the point of view of an intergalactic guide. So we'd get articles about soccer that would start with, on the planet Earth, which is the third planet out from the solar system soul, the humans like to play blah, 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 blah. Shut up, all right? It's like, this is going to be read by humans who live on Earth. Um, we had piles and piles of that shit, and we had to shovel our way out from under it, right? So, <laughs> So it's an example of how these projects, which, which, um, which deviated in some ways just a little bit from what, from, from what traditional encyclopedic frames um, were doing, really struggled to do this. And if you look at the big successful free and open source projects, GNU's not Unix, right? GNU, it's a bit like Unix. In fact, it's exactly like Unix. Um, um, uh, um, that's, the, that's, why, that's why GNU is a joke. It's like a hacker joke. Um, uh, uh, like, like uh, uh, if you look at OpenOffice, a bit like some other programs we may, have, we may know, right? Look at the big successful free and open source software projects. They tend to be based around ideas that people are pretty familiar with. And as a result, pe people can come and can participate in these projects and contribute because they know what it is that they're trying to produce. Um, another, proposition two. Um, Wikipedia attracted contributors because its founders were focused on evangelizing and attracting content creators. And the failed pro pro projects often focused on building technical capacity to support contributions. Um, so in any case, the idea here is that, that, that um, uh, uh, every project in the sample, except, Wiki, except Wikipedia and Newpedia, were founded by technologists, right? They were all founded by like hackers and programmers. Um, every one of these projects, including Newpedia, other than Wikipedia, wrote their own software. In Wikipedia, they just took some wiki software, and well, Wiki, Wikipedia did write its own software, eventually, but it wrote it, but it, wrote it much later, actually. It just used some off-the-shelf thing for, for a period of time. Um, uh, in most of these other projects, most of the resources, or even all of the resources, were dedicated to technological and procedural cap capacity. Um, for example, one of the, the one of the founders told me he mentioned in, in an interview for an hour, in an hour long interview. I, I said, what, "What did your project do better than Wikipedia? Our URLs were much better." And he was right. Wikipedia URLs are super bad. These like index.php, and you get the whole long list trying to find the revision ideas. His were very clear. But you know what? The quality of your URLs is not going to cause your project to succeed or fail, or at least it didn't in this particular case. Um, uh, one of the projects had three competing technological implement implementations, 200 different people, and only test content. They had a huge community of people building the stuff to build the encyclopedia, but they never built the encyclopedia. Right? Um, another, Interpedia had four software implementations, 400 participa participants, and, and, and basically very little content. A, a, a few articles here and there, but very little, right? It was all about sort of tech technologists building infrastructure, and as a result, they never created the thing to which people would want to go and build. Wikipedia, Wikipedia software was bad. You couldn't, like, create an article. You, you still can't create an article with a lowercase letter. Right, uh, and, and the first one, there's some JavaScript sort of like lowercase that, right? Um, you couldn't initially create an, every article had to be like at least three letters long and have the first letter be capital and have the, another letter be capital that's not the end one. I mean, it was crazy, but, um, but, but the project succeeded because, they, because the, the energy and effort was going into building the content. So um, the info network uh, uh, described his role in the project as, I had this notion that my job was to provide the platform like writing the code and not the content, that was the community's job. But since there was no community, it just didn't happen. And so I felt, I kept trying to refine the user interface and things like that to make it more inviting for people who could write stuff. But, but I didn't realize that to really get started, I just had to, there's only so much you can do by making the interface easier to use. You just have to get writers or write stuff yourself. Um, 
uh, one of the uh, founder from GNE described the necessary resources. He said, I said, what did you need? To, 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 to make this project a success. Well, we needed, uh, we needed uh, server capacity, you know, um, we were deciding how much content we'd have, so we needed to have space and room and bandwidth and all that kind of stuff, right? So they spent so much time worrying about where they would put the stuff, like where they would get the servers to put the stuff, that they never got the stuff in the first place. Um, and what's interesting is that very often these people, they see Wikipedia is very technologically unsophisticated. Um, a person from Wikipedia, which is a project from 1993, I said, what could you learn from Wikipedia? And he says, a lot of the stuff in Wikipedia is extremely obvious and not very sophisticated. I mean, Wikipedia is not high tech. I always imagine something high tech. That's my nature. I envision things that are at a higher technical level. We envision for the Interpedia as something that would be high tech. And we can see the Interpedia inspiring Wikipedia, but not the other way around, right? It's still hard for them to see things that they could learn because they're thinking very technologically about these projects. Um, Wikipedia's founders um, uh, saw their role as soliciting content. Um, I think the smart thing that Larry Sanger did uh, and that I would probably try to do would be to solicit academic experts and other people to try to write and seed articles, something that, that, that Wikipedia's founders were very involved in. Um, Someone, someone else cited Jimmy Wales and his role saying, I think, uh, I think we didn't have a strong evangelist out there getting people to contribute as, as one of the uh, struggles that they had. Point three, um, Wikipedia attracted contributors because it offered lower transaction costs and the failed models had higher costs. So by, by transaction costs here, this is kind of an academic term, but, uh, um, but the basic idea is that there are these little costs associated with like, like what you want to do is contribute, right? And let's say I want to um, contribute just, uh, uh, let, let's say like, like I, I want to fix, a, I see a comma that's it's missing in an article and it bothers me and I want to fix it, right? Now if it's in Britannica, I can, I can write a letter, I can go find a stamp, I can mail it to them, right? But I, I'm bothered by the missing comma, but I'm not bothered that much. I'm not bothered so much to find a piece of paper and to, and, and to send it in, right? Um, now, I am bothered enough that I'll press edit and fix it really quickly, right? Um, so the idea here is, is that these little costs, um, like the 44, I don't know, how much does a stamp cost? No, <laughs> I use the forever stamps. Um, uh, uh, but, but, but like, whatever, the, the 40 some cents for a stamp, I don't care that much. Um, so little, these little costs, things like creating an account, like logging in, like learning complicated markup, these sorts of things. All of these things, although they're sometimes very small, relative to the nature of the contribution, they can actually sometimes play a big role in deterring content. Um, so here's a quote from an H2G2 person says, I think describing how Wikipedia offered lower costs associated with contributing. It says, I think it's the immediacy of it. And certainly one of the aspects was the fact that you didn't have to sign up to edit. I mean, you can look at a page and see something wrong and immediately edit without having to do anything else, you know? Um, you can come along and do a drive-by edit and never be involved again and make a contribution. You can't do a drive-by on, on any other project. Drive-by edit. Um, um, Another example, the distributed encyclopedia failed because the building encyclopedia articles using handcraft HTML was being too complex. Wikis solved the problem um, uh, very nicely. But cost alone seemed limited in explaining this failure, right? One founder suggested that lower, um, only one founder suggested that lower contributions, um, that lower, uh, sorry, lower transaction costs were the most important reason for Wikipedia's success. Um, and several ar projects argued that, that, their, that their project was effectively as easy to contribute to Wikipedia. A lot of these projects had no logins, had no markup to learn. They were actually very easy. Um, for example, one, he said, so, uh, you know, describing how it was a problem, he says, one problem was the mandatory preview step before you saved it, which probably wasn't enough to kill the site single-handedly, but I probably would have changed it. Wikipedia does fine without that, having a mandatory preview step. Point four, and at my final point. Wikipedia attracted contributors because low attribution facilitated less individual social ownership of work products and sort of socially risky collaboration. Um, most failed projects use stronger attributions and more territoriality. So um, several of these projects allowed no direct collaboration on text. So that was a sort of a problem. Um, uh, another uh, um, uh, issue is that, that, uh, that, that some of the ones that did allow collaboration on text, they still put people's name on it. Right? So the idea is you'd have an author of an article, and even though anyone could come in and edit the article, because there was an author, people felt that they didn't want to sort of step on other people's toes. So even though there was the technical capacity to, co to collaborate, the idea that there was a name associated with it created like a sort of weak form of intellectual property almost, right? People didn't want to do it without asking. They wanted, to, they wanted to propose it. They wanted to discuss it first. And as a result, it allowed, it, it sort of made collaboration on the text very difficult. Now, I don't know if you like, I tried, if you would like see us, I mean, you're a bunch of Wikipedians, so you know this, right? When you see a, a sentence in a Wikipedia article that's been there for a long time and you want to find out who added it, it's actually very difficult to do, still, on Wikipedia, right? Finding out who's responsible for bits and pieces is, is, is very difficult. And not only is that, but, but, but my argument here is that not only is that not, maybe not bad, it actually really helped in facilitating really direct collaboration on text. So, um, 
Failed projects, um, their attribution system created barriers to collaboration. So one person said, in Wikipedia, when you submit content, you don't really get authorship credit directly. You appear in the history, but these things aren't necessarily words. They're just sort of, uh, your, they're just sort of your contribution to Wikipedia. But with everything, their writings were still theirs. So they had control of them. They received a kind of direct attribution. I think there was some weakness here that people who wrote something, um, and if it was factual content, if they had, the information was incorrect, there was no real, I mean, occasionally the editor would go in and change the content, but otherwise, it was sort of up to them to receive communications and re-add it. Um, I saw very similar things from other people. Um, uh, Wikipedia, a number of the people I interviewed said that Wikipedia succeeded because there was this low textual ownership, right? It's like the one, having one article as opposed to several write-ups on a node took advantage of the marginal contributions in a way that everything's not set up to. It really made it a much more strongly many hands make lighter work type of exercise. Someone else says, Wikipedia conquered because anyone could just write anything on any page without anyone's approval. Um, I have lots of quotes here. Um, uh, I want to go to this right here because I think this is sort of this is sort of a nice sort of summary of what I've tried to put up here. Um, the the story here is that we can think of we can think of sort of innovation in terms of the nature of what's being produced, in terms of innovation in terms of the product that's being produced, or innovation in terms of the process that we're using to build it um, to build it. So 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 established product and established product and established process is down here. This means we're going to build Britannica. And we're going to build it exactly the way that Britannica works. We're going to create traditional um, authority systems. Oh, sorry. Uh, we're going to build Britannica, and we're going to build it in, in, in the ways that we've done it before. And what people found was, um, and, and those projects really sort of failed to get traction, because they're like, we're going to, it's Britannica, except we're not going to pay you to do the same thing you'd be doing if you were doing it for Britannica. Um, um, similarly, in the, in the top corner, this is the innovative product and the innovative way. We're going we're to sort of explore new reference works online, and we're going to do it in this really cool, innovative new way, right? And people really struggled to understand, like, what was going on there, right? There were too many, all the balls were in the air. And people didn't know what to do, and they didn't really know how to do it. Um, in the bottom, um, the, the ones that succeeded at, um, a, a bit were everything to HGG2 and Wikipedia, which are kind of along that diagonal. You can see they sort of, they sort of held something con uh, uh, um, more or less constant. You, can, you either understand sort of what, how we're doing it, or you understand what we're doing. Um, and, um, but Wikipedia was really the only one that said, we're going to try to build the, the successful, the, the, the old thing, the thing we all know, but we're going to do it in a different way. And I think that if you look at free and open source software communities and peer production more widely, a lot of the big successes are up in that category, uh, up in that top group. So so that's sort of what I have um, here. As I said, I'm doing more interviews. Um, I'm testing these uh, sort of quantitatively in a big data set of wikis. Um, and I wanted to thank all of you and for everyone who's helped me on this research.